Welcome to a new video and a new camera review, this time the Nova 10 Pro. So let's get started. As you can see, a very cold and frosty winter. Let's take a look at the Nova 10 Pro and the camera system. We have a main 50 megapixel RYYB sensor, 1 over 1.5 inch sized, and an 8 megapixel ultra wide, as well as a depth sensor there, 2 megapixels, I think. And this is not the highlight of the camera, I would say, because this is basically what the predecessor also had. But what the Nova 10 Pro has on the front is I think way more interesting because we have here the possibility to shoot with a 60 megapixel main front pill shape cutout sensor as well as an 8 megapixel zoom lens on the front facing camera. Super interesting, I think we start with this one. And here we have the front facing video using the 60 megapixel camera recording 4K 30 frames per second. And this will be, yeah, I think this will be one of a time lifetime video review here because I'm not stopping the video because all of the cameras here on this phone can record 4K 30 and I can switch between all of them during one recording session, which is pretty, pretty awesome. So. As you can see here, we have a little bit of low dynamic range here on this one here on the front facing video, but the exposure on my face is running very, very good here. And we have autofocus as well. So if I want to show you what I was recording earlier with, this was the uh, Mate 50 Pro. Let's go here. Uh, as you can see, I can show you the camera system because it has autofocus as well. By default, the camera uses a 0 0.0 eight magnification uh, or zoomed out basically but uh, the native resolution would be like a little bit closer to this one here which is an ultra wide angle so it's a very ultra wide angle kind of camera that you have on the front facing um yeah, camera system here on the nova 10 pro and it uses 60 megapixels so even if i zoom in or crop into the 0 0.8 times or even further like for example one this would be uh, one times you can clearly see that it still has enough megapixels still to deal with 4k 30 recording but what i can do as well with this one as i showed you in my unboxing is i have an 8 megapixel uh, zoom lens in here two times zoom as you can see i have to stretch my hands further out and if i move around you can see probably it will be shaking because it doesn't have any eis i think so it gives you nice background bokeh and i can show you my headphones eventually if i have uh, some in but yeah usually this one is i think the better lens what i noticed as well is that sometimes when switching during through those lenses you get a little bit of lip sync issues where it gets out of sync because the 8 megapixel sensor here of course cannot record 4k so it has to use upscaling technologies and this can eventually produce some issues but now the cool thing about this one is when recording and you start with the front facing video you can switch to the back facing camera during recording without issues. So let's do this right now. And now we can see the back facing video and uh, me walking around. You can see how stable this shot is and no issues there at all. So I have the back facing video here. And the cool thing about the back facing video is, of course, I can also show myself if you want to vlog yourself with this one better hdr for sure higher larger sensor um, and you get like also the better background bokeh as well one over 1.5 inch size sensor and of course if you want to use this for vlogging you can do as well and you can also switch to the ultra wide angle so let's do this here quickly let's just pull down here and now i'm at the ultra wide angle you can see nice dynamic range as well and good stabilization the ultra wide angle loses a bit of color details here i would say so not so punchy colors anymore and it's definitely using upscaling technology from i think six megapixels to eight megapixels to get to reach the 4k because it also has only eight megapixels to deal with so if you want to vlog with this one here it will work out but why vlogging with this one if you have on the front facing camera higher megapixel count roughly the same size in terms of sensor size 
and you can see yourself so doesn't make so much sense for the ultra wide angle to be on the back for such a vlogging kind of task i think only the dynamic range might be a little bit better here but the exposure to the face not so much so yeah what i would like to do is then instead just switch to the front facing video and you can see here yeah it's working fine and uh, yeah what do you think about this very flexible vlogging camera system i think the first time that i see this on the huawei device that we have such good vlogging capabilities where we can use all the cameras at 4k 30 that are available on this uh, device except maybe the depth sensor two megapixels but you cannot use it anyway uh, directly so yeah what do you think about this uh, we have video capabilities, vlogging capabilities of the Huawei Nova 10 Pro. Very unique, isn't it? And of course, we have some more special video modes, just like the vlog mode here, where you can see it is recording full screen. It is not recording in 4K, however, but uh, 1080p. But I have various different posts. Switch to the front cam here uh, very easily. Very different scenes in this vlog front and rear at the same time. I have both stabilizations on them, which is pretty nice. Something that we saw already, but there are some more of rear and rear. Where we have the zoom lens and the or the ultra wide angle and the main i think it's zoomed in a little bit can zoom out if i want to or i can even zoom in to five times which is a bit like of grainy you can see also the zoom capabilities are not the two front facing videos that yeah use the zoom cam and the normal cam i'm not sure if you want to use this but for us eventually or such an option where you have yourself positioned down below you can also move around where you want to appear on the screen which is also pretty nice and uh, yeah this kind of thing where we have the ultra wide angle and the zoom shot and as well as this kind of shot here not sure who would use this kind of shot but yeah there are multiple shots in this uh, vlog the possibility for this front uh, video in widescreen and the switch the lens hopefully also the sound switches nicely but yeah the resolution is a bit of a problem because we have only uh yeah this stretch of, uh resolution that is like 1080p stretched basically uh, what do you think about this vlog mode and what I forgot to mention is besides those modes, we have also different effects in vlog mode. Like for example, now I have the blur mode, blur video activated. So it will utilize only the main camera on the back, not the front facing camera for some reason, but create like a background, fake background blur to it, which might be a bit too artificial. And I'm not sure if you can change it, but this is what it looks like. And we have certain other things, just like for example, the product showcase mode that allows you to use, I think the front facing video as well, for yeah, show, showcasing everything that you are holding into the phone let's try this so this is now the product showcasing mode on the front facing uh, video camera if i hold a product close here you can see it's automatically grabbing its focus so this is very interesting for people who like to show products for example and i think it's also not using the fully stretched kind of uh, video here in this case which is uh, also pretty nice so yeah, this is working fine, I think. And yeah, might be also very interesting for uh, vlogging if you want to show products and so on. Last but not least, the AI color mode. Also only working with the back facing main camera, just like the bokeh mode. So they are very, very similar in this kind of case, but it allows you to have like, yeah, your face yourself in color or the person that you're filming in color and the rest like uh, black and white, which is also a very interesting effect, I would say. If you want to, you can even record macro video that is utilizing, I think, the ultra wide angle camera. And uh, yeah, you can then just view various different things that are very small, very, very close up. And uh, the focusing should work as well, which is pretty awesome, I say. And uh, how close can I get to this? Even closer, as you can see here. It's a very, very small object. Uh, I think now I lost focus, but here you can go very close as you can see here. So let's take a look at the photos with the Nova 9. In low lights, you can see it is doing a pretty good job. The RYYB sensor is working its thing. You can read everything here in the background. There's almost no noise, which is cool because they're using some kind of algorithm that's smoothing out the noise very efficiently. Looks a bit artificial if you zoom in too much, but otherwise, if you don't zoom in, it looks very, very good already. When it comes to the selfie cam, the main highlight here, this is like by the by the 
default, I think 12 megapixels that you get out of it. And you can see nice and sharp everything because it's focusing also on my eye. So already my eye is very, very uh, nice and detailed. The bokeh is nice as well as the HDR in the background and uh, yeah, everything nice and sharp. Cool thing is you can take 60 megapixel selfie photos as well with the 60 megapixel lens. It's ultra wide as you can see here, so it's a lot more wider, but I can zoom in. You can see how much I can zoom in and it's still looking okay and sharp and nice. So yeah, it's a very, very good um, front facing uh, camera and you can see how much details I can get here out of this camera, which is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, 60 megapixels, it's uh, insane on a front facing uh, camera. Outdoors is also doing a pretty good job when it comes to sharpness. If you have enough light, you can see no, not much skin smoothing going on and so on. Nice and sharp, nice background blur, nice uh, bokeh and uh, nice um, HDR. And uh, the main cam doing its work also pretty nice here. Nice foreground, nice background blur. Uh, according to the yeah, size, 1 over 1.5 inch size uh, sensor. Also the HDR is doing its thing. The colors are good. I think the colors of the ultra wide angle are also still okay. They're not so muted as I thought they would be. So they corrected this apparently with the newest firmware update. And also I think you can see the apparent sharpening going on. I don't even have to zoom in, but if I zoom in, you can see, ooh, yes, they are sharpening up the hell out of the sensor. So lots and lots of sharpening applied to the sensor here to make uh, everything look a little bit better. But it, if you zoom in, it's not so good. So don't zoom in on the ultra wide angle shots. This is one of the weakest uh, of the whole camera setup here, I would say. And uh, the main sensor here directly into the sun, you can see HDR doing its work. The colors are a bit different here, but this might be due to the yeah, directly shooting into the sun. Otherwise, it's still OK. You can see um, most of the details still going on here. Very hard shot, but uh, very good indeed. Close up shots with the main lens are OK. You can see you get nice background foreground and background blur. Uh, details are there as well. You see a little bit of uh, ice going on because we had frost in the night. And uh, then, of course, uh, close up shots utilizing the main, uh, utilizing the ultra wide angle. You can see this is how close you can get. It was still confirming focus. I'm not so sure if it had focus because there's like oh, almost nothing really in focus, but you can get very close. And it's very, very interesting if you step uh, a bit further away what you can get in terms of uh, shots. You're definitely better than the two megapixel ultra, um, uh, ultra macro shots. Uh, from other cameras that don't have even focus. This one has a focus, even though it's not always nailing the focus as you saw before. Um, I think the five megapixel one from uh, Xiaomi is still doing a little bit of a better shot because it's a tele macro lens, but uh, still nevertheless utilizing the ultra wide angle here for macro shooting is a good, is a step in the right direction. And I think it is doing an okay job um, for this uh, price region. When it comes to the darker conditions, this is dim lit situation. Wonderful, wonderful, no noise at all. A bit of sharpening applied, a bit of processing applied, as you can see here, but this is like so good for a dim lit situation like this here. And even without night mode in a completely dark scene where I couldn't see the tools at all, it is able to lift it up and have them nice and visible. Of course, if you zoom in, you can see uh, there is heavily noise reduction applied and it's not 100% sharp everywhere, as you can see, but still doing a nice, nice job and lifting up those colors. Uh, it's a bit too green, in my opinion here. This might be due to the RYYB sensor here. Um, but when you turn on night mode, what you get is more right colors for sure. So it's warmer for sure, a bit brighter as well. But also if it is, as it was taking a little bit longer of an exposure and we don't have OIS, you can see it's a bit blurry. It's blurrier than the earlier shot, but you get a bit better of colors. Uh, so yeah, night time, it's an expert in this. The RYYB sensor is very good. Overall, a very, very, very good sensor. Uh, here, the main sensor, not a big upgrade, I would say, for uh, in comparison to the Nova 9, but indeed a very good uh, camera system, uh, totally um, for a mid range uh, device like this. What do you think? Another cool thing that I discovered with the Nova 10 Pro is that I can use my headphones here, as you can see here, the Huawei Freebuds 2, and it's picking up the sound from those uh, true wireless headphones instead of using the internal mics, which is pretty good in yeah, a situation where you want to have good sound quality, but 
yeah, don't have anything like a microphone directly here and there's wind blowing or something like this, or you're further away, further away, and you still want to record something uh, nicely with your phone, you can do so with the Nova 10 Pro. So, and this is now the internal microphone without any headphones on. How does this sound in comparison to the ones with the FreeBuds Pro 2 inside? Overall, I think I'm very happy about the Nova 10 Pro. It's a very, very good and solid device. And what can I say? It's a solid update to the Nova 9. It is not a revolutionary upgrade, but with the 60 megapixel front-facing video, it and the capabilities to record 4K30 on all camera lenses and switch between the camera lenses, even the front to the back or from the back to the front, is really, really a significant improvement for the vlogging people that like to vlog really like me, for example. And it's a great upgrade. I wish that, yeah, they would put maybe a better processor inside Snapdragon 870, 888. Um, Maybe better ultra wide angle because the ultra wide angle is a bit weak. It's one of the weakest with the most of processing going on, especially in photos. Um, where I would say, yeah, here 12 megapixels, 30 megapixel ultra wide would be, I think, the better choice here with a bit of my, a bit of more resolution, bigger sensor eventually. But overall, I'm very, very happy about the Nova 10 Pro as a vlogging device. It's like right there where the uh, on a 70 is which, which is one of the best vlogging devices that you can get in the mid-range sector right now. I think the Nova 10 Pro might even beat it because it has 4K 30 on the front and can switch between front and back camera. So what do you think about the Nova 10 Pro and all my findings and my camera review here? Write it down in the comment section. That's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.